Hello guys, welcome to another video. And as Affliction League wraps up for most of us, I'm beginning to shift my focus towards the next league, 3.24, which we don't have a concrete release date for just yet. However, we do have the information provided to us in this news post from GDG for Path of Exile's 3.24 expansion timeline, which states that they're planning for a late March release, and with the reveal livestream happening around the middle of March. My impression of this was a March 29th launch for 3.24, with the reveal livestream going down 8 days before that on March 21st, although there is the possibility of a March 22nd launch with the reveal livestream on March 14th, We'll pretty much know for sure if that's the case since the expansion name reveal always happens exactly two weeks before the reveal livestream, which would be today. So if we don't get a name reveal today, definitely expect a March 29th launch for 3.24 or possibly even later if the league gets delayed further. Hopefully that doesn't happen, but it could always be the case. Anyway, regardless of when 3.24 will drop, I've started my testing for that launch. And back at the launch of Affliction League, I actually initially wanted to League start a Righteous Fire Body Swap Chieftain, as both of those abilities had significant changes in 3.23. Righteous Fire had the biggest change, with the flat base damage going away entirely in favour of increased scaling based purely on maximum life and energy shield. Whilst Body Swap had the smaller but still very significant change, with the quality stat now providing more of the damage from maximum life stat that pre-exists on the gem. This is 4% of your maximum life as base fire damage, with 20% quality now adding an extra 4% on top for a total of 8% of maximum life as base fire damage. And this can of course be scaled further with things like Ashes of the Stars or the Enhanced Support Gem. So the idea here for this synergy is that you're able to scale damage entirely from maximum life, instead of the more typical gem level scaling. And it's my impression that this combo would be quite nice on a league start, as the new RF kind of just wants to click lots of life nodes, which would usually leave your secondary damage ability, something like Fire Trap or Scorching Ray, behind in terms of damage. But with Body Swap that's not really the case, because you get a bunch of damage scaling for both abilities just by scaling life. So why the Chiefs and Ascendancy? Well, that's pretty much all about the Ramako notable in this setup, because we're going to be using Body Swap to Ignite, and RF already deals a bunch of fire damage over time. And whilst you're blinking around with Body Swap, your character is considered to be stationary, so the fixed minus 20% to fire resistance on nearby enemies is going to have really good uptime. Not only that, but I mean, I'd be lying if I said I wasn't a Chieftain enjoyer. This build just gets the best out of Chieftain because we're also taking to Sardio and Velaco, which makes resistance gearing incredibly easy. Even capping Chaos Resistance early is very straightforward. And since we're using Righteous Fire and we're going to be scaling maximum fire resistance, Velaco gets a lot of mileage here as well. And of course, we're absolutely going for Hinakora too. Those explosions are just way too juicy to pass up. And in this setup, we'll have very high generic Ignite chance, Couple that with the fire mastery for increased damage against ignited targets and those pops really do hit very hard. In the end, I didn't leak start RF body swap for affliction because I didn't get the time to actually test it out pre-league launch. So I ended up just going with the same starter that I did for Ancestor, a flamewood ignite chieftain. Though after the small amount of testing I've done here, I kind of wish I just YOLO'd it now in hindsight. This setup is really nice so far for league launch. I've not had a huge amount of time to test it out just yet, but the character has just reached maps, and levelling through the campaign was an absolute breeze. From the moment I picked up Righteous Fire at level 16 in Axe 2, it was smooth sailing from there. The damage on RF in the early campaign is just insane even with no support gems, and it's significantly better after the scaling change. Level 1 Righteous Fire used to deal a flat 39 base fire damage per second with an extra 35% of your maximum life and energy shield as base damage. So with a character that has 400 maximum life, which is roughly what I had when I picked the gem up, this would have dealt 179 base fire damage per second. And now with the new scaling, which is based purely upon 70% of your maximum life and energy shield, it deals 280 base fire damage per second on a character that has 400 life, so that's around 56% more damage. And you can imagine just how much of a breeze this makes the campaign, because you can largely just focus on clicking life and regen nodes on the passive tree, 
and grabbing fire resistance on gear. Two ruby rings is usually good enough early on with the fire mastery for regen to easily sustain RF and you can just run through everything. For this character I muled splitting steel and chance to bleed from a duelist and use that setup to progress through act 1. Although on a second go around I definitely muled some gems from witch instead for more of a caster setup with rolling magma from the get go. I'd recommend Pox's guide for leveling for that it's just packed full of information I'll link that in the description below. I grabbed body swap as soon as I could from act 3 library and started to level that gem up right away but I didn't start using it until I had leveled it up a little bit. And before that I was just using Holy Flame Totem with Combustion and added Fire Damage support. But with the POC setup you'd still be using Rolling Magma for Igniting with Holy Flame Totem for some extra damage which is going to be a bit better there. From Act 5 and 6 onwards I was using Body Swap with RF and it felt really good. I will mention my ascendancy choices here. I took Tassadio from the first Labyrinth because this one is just so nice early on. You basically don't have to worry about resistances from this point onwards. Just grab Fire Resistance and everything else just falls into place. So it's really nice for getting good gear there. And in the second lab I took Ramako and switched my Curse from Flammability to Punishment. I also changed Combustion to Ignite Prolif in the Body Swap link. I thought about the Ascendancy choices quite a bit before I did this playthrough, but I think the only way that you take Velako from the third lab is if you dropped an early Rise of the Phoenix, which would make it a very valuable pickup. Otherwise, I think taking Velako from the Uber lab makes the most sense, so I took Hinakora from the third lab, and I don't need to explain why those pops are just insane. As soon as you start mapping with Hinakora, you know you made the right choice by clicking on Chieftain. And one thing I will mention about Body Swap which I didn't discuss earlier is the corpse component of the ability. It will prioritise and explode corpses in addition to the damage dealt based on your maximum life. And this part of the damage is instead scaling from corpse life. It's 7.9% on a level 20 gem, which is the same scaling as Detonate Dead. And this part of the ability is actually quite significant. For example, in the campaign, the Radakesh fight in Act 7 with the dogs that spawn right before Groost, I exploded one of those corpses and Groost just pretty much instantly melted. And this component of the ability can really be used to your advantage in arenas and areas where you have several high life monsters. For example, in the Maven invites later on in progression, you'll be able to use one of the boss corpses to explode and proliferate a massive ignite which will just wipe out the rest of all of the monsters in that encounter. But that's going to be later on in progression, for now I've just reached maps and all is good so far. One very important thing that I'll mention is you'll want to use every Labyrinth Divine font through the campaign to add quality to Body Swap, since the quality scaling is such an impactful stat for the damage that it provides. I actually farmed the third lab a few times just to get the gem to 20% quality. But yeah, so far so good, I'll be playing this character a bit more to see how progressing the Atlas feels so you can expect some more updates for this one coming shortly. I've moved the primary way to support my channel from YouTube memberships over to Patreon instead. If you want to support the growth of my channel and help me to be able to spend more of my time making videos here on YouTube, check out the Patreon, the link is in the description below. A big shout out to my first patron, AcidBath101, your support is appreciated, thank you. That's it for this one, as always, stay tuned and stay safe.